Hi, I'm George Nordhaus, and welcome to Monday Morning. This week is something different. I say that every week. I understand that. But I promise you that you're going to hear something that most of you have never considered, really, for your agency, the art of team selling. Uh, we work as a team on week. This is the art of team selling. This is not. This is an organized way to do it. It's a game changer. And when I read an article about Bob Sturdivant, uh, with his principal there at the at, at the Gibson Agency, and Gibson's in uh, Northern Indiana. They're in Plymouth. They're in South Bend, Fort Wayne. They're moving forward. When I talked to him, I got a great idea. And he said, "Okay, well let's do this." And there's Bob's uh, uh, picture, a little bit about it. Bob, first of all, tell us about yourself a bit, will you? Um, I'm a principal at uh, Gibson Insurance. I've uh, been in the insurance business for almost 40 years. I've uh, been with Gibson for 30 years. Um, and primarily my role is a broker and producer uh, for the agency. Now you've made a heck of a uh, uh, <laughs> you've, you've made a real impact on things. I see you got the designations down there like like uh, most of them. Uh, and I know what uh, when, I, when you told me about this program, I just flipped. Well, tell, tell me just a minute. Tell, tell us a little bit about Gibson, will you? I know it's a heck of a well, Gibson. Um, we are uh, we were founded in 1933 um, in Plymouth, Indiana. And we have been an employee-owned organization from day one. So the owners have always been active in the business. Uh, we formed an ESOP uh, about four years ago uh, so that 35% of our shares are now owned by the staff at oh, Gibson man. Insurance. I love it. And, and we have 17 shareholders that own 65% of Gibson. So we are truly an independent agency. You are, and, I, and you've been getting honors like crazy. I looked at some. Tell, tell us about some of the latest ones. Well, um, we've worked with Reagan and Associates and received their best practices uh, designation for the last 22 years consecutively. Oh, God, um, that's unbelievable. That was 22 years ago is when Reagan came out with their best practices. And um, we also are um, we received the honors as best places to work in the state of Indiana, uh, three years running. And then this year, we're very excited. Um, the um, Small Business Administration in Indiana uh, recognizes 20 companies to watch in Indiana, and we made the list this year. So we're very excited about our growth. Uh, we just opened a Fort Wayne office um, uh, January last, well, 2015, and uh, that office is uh, now staffed with eight uh, professionals. So uh, we are, um, we're growing and we're moving. you got 117 employees, I believe, all told. That's almost. correct. That's a heck of an agency. I, ironically, uh, about that, uh, and I, I have to say this, when I uh, uh, was brought back to Indiana, because I'm a Hoosier from Evansville, Indiana, but when I was brought back to Indiana to run the Indiana Big Eye in the early days of my career, the guy who hired me was Dan Gibson. And, of course, he was the president of this thing. He was the president of the big eye at the stage of the game. And then I That's guess right. his son uh, came on, and then you guys started growing, growing, growing more. Uh, let me look at the uh, at Jerry's picture here a minute. That was Bob. We're going to have a this, – this time we have two people on, guys. We, we've not done this before. Um, this is Jerry Scott. And the uh, interesting thing about Jerry Scott, incidentally, he's an ARM already. Uh, but uh, Jerry, tell us about your background. Go ahead. Sure. I, I joined Gibson uh, two and a half years ago as chief operating officer from outside the industry. <clears throat> I, my career was leadership, operations, executive level, human resources, really with a focus on leadership development, talent perpetuation. I was actually a Gibson client for six years, a very big client uh, with uh, a medical plan with 2,000 lives with oh a trucking company. Mm. trucking company in South Bend called Town Air Freight. So got to know Gibson really well as a client over six years. And when they started looking for some leadership talent and operations, I, I came to work to uh, to lead the service teams uh, and to support folks like Bob. You know, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? Because management is management, wherever you are. In fact, it is, you didn't know anything about insurance very much, you told me. I mean, I hope I'm not saying anything I shouldn't be saying. But mm -hmm. you weren't an insurance guy at all. And yet it works. No, no, it's it's 
leadership, it's talent, it's process, it's continuous improvement, uh, and you, you apply those concepts to how insurance agencies operate, same as you do any other business. Well, the only thing I see totally wrong with your, your background there as I was reading it is that you went to the University of Tennessee. Obviously, you couldn't get into Vanderbilt, but I understand how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> guess, guess where I went, will you? Huh? Yeah. Boy, we hated each other. <laughs> but that's the only, that's the only yeah. huh? Well, listen, let's go forward. Let's talk about, uh, let's talk about this thing. I, I think it's fascinating to talk about team selling because it is a game changer. So tell me about it. Okay, what's wrong with this picture? I don't know. Tell me. Okay, well, what's wrong with this picture? Uh, if if you can see my screen, we we yeah, have uh, yeah. sixteen members of this team, and uh, all of the team members are the same person. So I don't know if other producers feel the way I did uh, when I was working and trying to build my own book. But uh, as as a producer, you have to wear many hats. And um, so this this kind of uh, that picture did it for me is uh, one person trying to work, uh, you know, as a team of one uh, can be uh, very challenging. Mm -hmm. So um, just a few thoughts for producers to think about: uh, Why is it that producers, as in the general rule, work alone? Um, have you ever uh, wondered how producers can get maxed out? Have you ever talked to a producer that might have felt like this is the most business that he can write? Um, how long does it take to build a book of business? Uh, 500000 750 or even a million dollars, which is a substantial book of business. How long does that take? Ten years? You know, maybe seven if you're really a superstar, but can you do it in less than seven years? Probably not. Why are the best producers less likely to spend their time and energy producing new business? So producers that are successful over time are going to find themselves really, dic their time is dictated by their renewals and their current client base. And really the game is that they try to build that book up and retain that book. But the truth is how they got there was by being effective producers of new business but later in life, when they are at the pinnacle of their career, they now find that they spend very little time uh, with new business. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the ironies of uh, this model. Mm -hmm. um, and lastly, why don't we pay our teachers? And what I mean by that is many agencies will assign a producer to be a mentor. But does he ever get paid for it? No, no. not really. No. You could say, well, he's an owner. so. Yeah, what goes around comes around, but at the end of the day, uh, our teachers are really not paid to be good mentors. So there's a few things wrong with the model as we, we have today, and that's what I really came to uh, discuss today. Good. All right. Well, let's talk to me. So uh, as we went through this journey of team selling, uh, we actually had a team meeting one time, and somebody, uh, some of the someone in the meeting called me a lone wolf. You know that really I just I work by myself and and I hunt you know for my own food and and so forth, and um, really got to thinking about that concept. Uh, number one, I don't consider myself a lone wolf, but that's another topic, but uh, really, to some extent, that's our model, that uh, the best producers uh, will, will kill for their own, own food and, and, and build their own book of business. And so we actually, uh, you know, found this picture and, and uh -huh. joked around a little bit. So, okay. um, so uh, you know, what is the career path of a legacy producer? So a legacy producer is really what I view as um, the way it's been you know, in traditionally and the in the production of an insurance agency and you know what a what a producer is first uh, uh, needs to do is uh, they get prospects assigned. They get a prospect list and and maybe the agency would buy you a directory and just say here here's your directory. Um, I remember uh, receiving a telephone book. You know, and Dave Gibson <laughs> says, you know, just go through the yellow pages, and uh, there'll be some prospects in there for you. Yeah, thanks and a lot. That, thanks a know, lot. Yeah, yeah. Now don't help me. <laughs> like, yeah, right. Horrible. So, so how many of us have been to sales school? 
I mean, you know, it, oh, Hartford has it, Travelers have it, you know, they all, they send you to sales school, and uh, then, then you're told, go write new business, and uh, then, of course, if you, if you do write business, now you have renewals, and, uh, you know, you, you soon find out that, uh, well, geez, I've got to write more new than I lose, if I'm going to win at this game, mm -hmm. and then ultimately, if you're good at it, you're now on, on top of the mountain, and you've got to stay on the top of the mountain while all your competitors try to knock you off. And ultimately, the one uh, flaw in this issue is there's no real perpetuation plan. Uh, like insurance agencies don't always think about perpetuation. Uh, they really don't think about it when they talk about perpetuating the book of business. So, you know, what comes to mind for me is what's the maximum book? Is it a million and a half? I think we would all agree in the business that that's, that's a really nice, healthy book of business. And certainly, I, there's probably producers out there that can produce more than that, but maybe they're, they have special circumstances or special books of business or or maybe they have one account that's a million dollars of revenue uh, that can help them write more. But, you know, I'd say rule of thumb is people would say that maybe maximum would be a million and a half. And about how many accounts can you handle? Uh, now, I recall that in, when I, back in the day, I did have more than 100 accounts. You know, I had 130 accounts. Hmm. Quite frankly, it drove me nuts, you know, to try <laughs> to handle all of those accounts and keep all balls in the air and make sure nothing fell down. But um, there is there is a maximum, you know, when you're working by yourself as to how much business can you write. Sure. So that's pretty much the uh, what I would view as the traditional model for producer. Right. I understand totally, I'm afraid. <laughs> yep. So here's some facts about the Gibson producer. I'll just say the typical... Gibson producer and from 1990 to uh, 2010, uh, really in the last 20 years, uh, we were generalists. You know, we wrote pretty much whatever we got our hands on, from auto dealers to uh, manufacturers to distributors to schools. I mean, uh, uh, we were generalists, so we, we, we didn't necessarily specialize. Prospecting, to some extent, those prospect lists got stale. You know, no, we, we added new names, of course, and, and we learned about them, but, but maybe the activity itself was really kind of getting repetitious. Um, generally, our referrals came through clients, and if we got referrals from clients, th those were normally where new business would come from. Um, as books of business got larger, they became vulnerable, uh, vulnerable to other competitors. So as an individual producer had trouble managing his book, he really had less and less time to spend with customers, and that would open the door for other competitors to, uh, to uh, get that business. Uh, resources became stretched. Uh, there's only so much resource that one person can do, but then, of course, uh, the supporting staff uh, was getting uh, those resources stretched. The growth slows down over time. So the larger the book, um, it's more difficult to keep up to a 10 or 15 percent growth rate. And so an individual producer's growth starts to slow down. Um, the pre-qualification of, of an opportunity is up to the individual. So some individuals are working on accounts that maybe other uh, senior producers would say, boy, I'd never work on that one. You know, he's got no chance to write that. Mm -hmm. But yet the agency would allow that to go on because each of us were working as individuals. Uh, the pipeline over time would get thinner uh, with uh, a producer that was successful and had a large book. And, uh, but, you know, the stars were celebrated. You know, we, we, we have a president's club and you got in front of the entire agency and they gave you an award. And um, and that was that was all all great, but again, it was the it was the uh, accomplishments of the individual that were really uh, were noticed, and then uh, basically it was up to the individual to maintain the book. 
You know, I just I know right now, uh, Bob, that that a lot of uh, agents are not not as we sit here, but later are going to be looking at this and thinking of this and say, "That's me. That's the way it is right now." And you know, I, know I would think no. <laughs> I uh, I've come to know known a lot of uh, producers like myself and and other agencies, and and I think uh, yeah, I think I know. I know that how they operate is very similar to, to us. And, and again, this isn't about saying that um, it's wrong. You know, it's worked for many years. But, you know, is, is it the right model? Is there a different model? And really that's what this is about is kind of exploring a different way of doing business. All right, let's look at it. I'm, I'm interested. I can't wait to find out how you do it. Wow, look at so, that. So uh, rolling in here, uh, yep. we have uh, – the, um, I'm going to have to go back to previous years. Sorry about that. So That's there's right. your slide. That's right. Um, basically, this is what I would call the career path of the team producer. <laughs> so so uh, first off, when I'm talking about a team producer uh, or team selling, um, you, you don't have individual books of business. The, the team has an entire book of business for which the producers that are on that team are sharing in that book. Wow. And, and envision a pie, and each producer is getting a slice of the pie. Now, at the beginning of the year, you have to decide what is the right piece of pie that's appropriate for that employee or that producer based on the book that he had. So you do that the first year that you go into it. But that, uh, that pie can move, and the percentages can move depending on, on the contribution of that individual to the team. Okay. So just like in a football team, you know, you might start off a third-string quarterback by the end of the season, might be the star quarterback, and now he needs a pay raise because he's, he's done really well. Um, so that's, but ultimately the team decides uh, what's, what's fair. Um, but what makes this model work is that um, everyone is sharing in the success of the team, not the success of the individual. So sales bonuses um, are all uh, all shared. Um, the, the team is high-fiving your success at the end of the year. Um, so a lot different, uh, a lot different model. So so basically, what the components are is that the team actually develops a sales strategy, not the agency, but the team. So you have sales leadership on the team. And the sales leadership, along with producers, are determining how are we going to go about, you know, reaching our goals for the next year. Question, question, uh, Bob, Bob. How many people yeah. are on, how many producers are on a, on a team? Well, we have different teams at the agency, but <laughs> on my team, there's three other producers. So myself and three others. Okay. And um, yeah, and they they range in age. Uh, my uh, my original team uh, mate is, uh, you know, in his 50s. Um, I've got uh, another r relationship manager who's a producer, and, and he would be um, in that range. And then our newest uh, member of the team is 26. Oh, wow. And he's, uh, he's a hunter and a very effective uh, producer. Good. Wow. So that, that makes up our four. Mm -hmm. And um, so what's the maximum book? I mean, that's our number. Uh, the four of us share 4.5 million in revenue, um, mm. and and we have about 100 accounts between the four of us. Mm. So Big these one. are these are large accounts. Um, our average account is 45,000 revenue. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. big! Wow, yeah. that's fascinating. So again, we're going after uh, good size accounts. Uh, the, the premiums are in excess of $100,000 premium, the accounts that we will go after. And in the team selling environment, you'll have more than one producer working on the same opportunity. So two producers will go out for uh, introductions, for assessing risk, for any, uh, any of the work that we do, any of the uh, presentations, proposals, uh, we have two producers working on it. And uh, that we found that to be very effective, um, and and very efficient. I have another so, question. Let me ask you yeah. something right now. You got four people on there, but 
one of them, what, what happens if one of them is a fantastic producer and the other one is not as fantastic and, you know, whatever. And everybody still gets the same? Am I understanding that correctly? They're not equal quarters. So if you think of the pie. Okay. Um, All right. You know, so, for example, you know, when, when we started this six years ago, I had the largest book in the agency. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, of course, my partner who came into my team, he wanted to split 50-50, and we kind of <laughs> sure. laughed about that, you know. Yeah. I, my book was about 1.7. His book was about five, 600,000. Yeah. Um, and, and we started the splits accordingly. Mm -hmm. um, over, over time, as the team leader, I have, um, I have given up more percentage. But the real game here is the pie is bigger, so everybody wins. Mm -hmm. Nobody complains when the pie gets bigger, and uh, the percentages will start to move according to the contribution of, of the individuals on the team. Got it. And we've had no arguments. You know, really Amazing. nobody argues about, Amazing. about <laughs> That scares me. I can't imagine you not having arguments every year. Okay, we're going to divide it up this time. But I did this, and you did that, and you don't have that. But also... You know, also think about perpetuation. I'm not going to be doing this seven years, ten years from now. Mm -hmm. So I have the largest book in the agency that now is perpetuated on my team. So my teammates know this. The percentages for I them will it. continue to grow, and uh, but they have to earn it. You know, they do have to perform and be a valuable member of the team. All right. And li likewise, George, if a, if a producer does not work out at all. It's up to the team to say, you know what, he doesn't belong on the team. <laughs> so it's not it's not an agency decision. It's a it. team decision. I got it. It's just different. So the account accountability is is really a, a big accountability and responsibility. I see. Is, it. Uh, yeah. There's nowhere for a producer to hide. Got it. Now, item number two, I do want to highlight producer roles defined. Uh, we have learned that on the team environment. Um, you have to be very specific as to what is your job. So think of a football team. You know, a quarterback, everybody knows what the quarterback does. Everybody knows what the front line does. Um, everyone knows what a receiver does. Your roles have to be very defined, and there's plenty of distractions in this business. And we do not want our producers on our teams distracted. So uh, we have five you know, key priority items, and those producers have to have to do their role well. And if everybody does the role well, then the team will play very well, mm -hmm. and you'll have very good results. So that's critical. Um, we implement the sales strategy that we've set down. Uh, as I mentioned, the producer is responsible to the team, and uh, sales goals and bonuses are shared, so the team comes up with a sales goal. And our sales goal for 2016 uh, for new business for the four of us is 600,000 of revenue. Oh my gosh, that's high! Wow. So we celebrate we celebrate our victories. So again, <laughs> that that's good team building activity, and we have fun doing that. <laughs> um, and the success of the team trumps the individual. So while we still have President's Club, uh, the President's Club is shared by the team. So when the agency recognizes the president club achievements, uh, the whole team is being recognized, not the individual. Um, and ultimately, it, it creates uh, more creativity, more imagination uh, on the team to uh, figure out ways to win, uh, how to be more efficient in uh, new business. And, and the new, everyone on the team knows that the new business generation is very important. Well, t tell me how it's worked, will you? I want to know how, it's, how you've been doing it, because I, I, I think we need to, <laughs> to move to that, that because it's highly, it's interesting to me. I just want to, you've done, been doing it for five years. How's it worked? Okay. So as far as the maximum book, I don't see any, uh, it is it, the synergy and, and the capacity to write business is so much greater with four than with one, and mm -hmm. so I don't see any maximum there. Um, so under a team-based model, uh, basically, now th this is what happened. 
Um, how it works generally is that the, all four of us have to come up with our top prospects. Uh, we are um, hitting those prospects with social media, with email blitzes, uh, with various prospecting. Uh, we uh, invite uh, these prospects to our events and we try to get them to engage with us. And ultimately, um, uh, b between the four of us, we all try to get an executive briefing or is an introductory uh, appointment. Uh, once an introductory appointment's made, then we, uh, we, we put them through our risk management process. Uh, once a client has uh, agreed to the risk management process and their assessment, um, we generally are coming out with about a 70% hit ratio. So um, it's not a quotation process, it's an assessment process. So that's part of, a, part of the success. Mm -hmm. um, so our, you know, one thing that we studied in the last five years, um, our average uh, production by a producer has gone from 70,000 revenue to 140. So we have actually doubled wow. uh, our new business production in this model. Wow. Uh, also, the new business in five years uh, doubled per, per producer. So aggregating it. Uh, in five years before we did this and five years after, the new business written in that five years was twice as much. Um, our retention was improved um, because we can't lose business on the team either. <laughs> and so everyone knows what our lost ratio is, and uh, we're working to uh, keep that. Uh, the team did shift to niche development. We found that you know, we were more effective in a team environment and more effective at producing business if we stayed in our niche. We stayed in the comfort of, of those business industries that we knew very well. And yeah, yeah. so with that, most of our prospecting is inside uh, a particular industry. Got it. And you've heard that before, George. I'm, I'm sure. Well, yeah, because I mean, it's just got it's got to be more and more that way. I think. And I was going to ask you about your niches, but I don't want to do that because your competition might hear. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh no! I imagine they, they, they know already. Anybody, <laughs> anybody can try to copy what we do, but they, yep. they just they can't do what we do. I can see it. Yeah. Okay, keep going. Sales strategies became sharper and more well defined. Why? Because you're talking to somebody else on the team. You know, you're going to be much more effective at, 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 at looking at all the pros and cons when you have a team environment. Uh, the book itself grew at, uh, exponentially. Uh, we went from a two million one uh, book in 2009 to uh, four and a half million in 2015. Wow. Um, we hired two new producers. So when we started off with two producers, um, and then we hired two more to build up the four, and um, that you know that we did that out of necessity because we were uh, we were getting very efficient. Uh, mentoring evolved into full-scale training. So I see mentoring as more of a passive thing. You might not do it every day. Uh, the mentor may not seek out the, uh, the new producer. Uh, basically, the model there is that the new producer comes into the, the, the mentor's office and asks, hey, how do you do this? You know, I, I need some help with this. Well, when you're in a team environment, we're, we are helping each other every day. Uh, we have pipeline meetings every two weeks. We are constantly looking at uh, how can we make each of us more effective players and staying in our role. So when we bring in a new producer that's had no insurance experience, uh, we, are, we have every uh, incentive to get the training right. And ultimately, the opportunities are better qualified because we're talking about, is this the right opportunity? Are they really engaged with the process? And uh, we are very much based on so solution-based selling, so um, focusing on clients that have problems and uh, blowing those problems up uh, to, to win. Uh, there's more energy and drive. I bet uh, so. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, it's very exciting. Um, and so whether 
you're a 30-year veteran in the business or you just started in the business. Uh, everyone's, uh, you know, you got young people working with uh, more experienced uh, producers. Mm -hmm. And uh, producers that have, that have been in this business a while, if they were honest with themselves, they would say, I need to write new business. You know, because that's, that's the reason I get up in the morning is, is I want to win that business. It's not, not so much I want to make more money today, but I want to win. I want to beat the other guy or I want to beat the other um, gal who's, who's, who's got this account. And that's what uh, gets your juices going. So uh, when, you're, when you're in a team that's producing a lot of new business, um, more energy is created. Uh, the performance is elevated. Truthfully, look how much, look how many games that you're playing. You know, when you're producing this much business, you you have more opportunities, and you're more effective at producing. Um, whereas, as you get more experience, and you're not involved in as many new business opportunities, you'll get stale, and you won't be quite as effective. Well, and uh, we also found out that one plus one equals three. And uh -huh. just very simply, that two producers working together can produce as much business as three working individually. That's phenomenal. Well, let me ask this now. Where do you get these producers? Where do they come from? They come from other agencies or what? Yeah. Uh -huh. That's, That's where Jerry, Jerry comes in. <laughs> okay, Jerry, you're nickel. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you know, as you can tell, this this is a whole new a whole new environment when it becomes, when you start talking about uh, how are you going to grow? How are you going to perpetuate? How are you going to uh, fill in gaps from retiring producers? And, you know, Gibson is 18 million year in revenue. We have a very strong employee-owned culture. We want to double the size of this agency at least every eight years. So we're very driven to grow. And, and Everything I'm going to talk about uh, applies to the operations and service side of the house, same as it does to the sales and the production side of the house. But we, we really figured out, taking a, a good hard look at reality, that we could not do this. We cannot grow at this pace if we had to hire experience. So on the operations side, we had to do this. And as Bob has described, in the team selling environment, we've had to do this. We have had to engineer our company so that we can uh, grow and perpetuate with entry-level talent. And so every system we have now is designed to grow and perpetuate using entry-level talent that is primarily sourced through uh, new college graduates. Wow. Wow. Um, That's so rare, Jerry. So rare. I hardly ever hear that. I don't know if I've ever heard it, as a matter of fact. Yeah, and, and I think that's a game changer. When you have a sales culture that is team-based, where the team uh, trains and mentors uh, an entry-level producer and makes them successful because they have a vested direct financial interest in how fast that producer trainee comes up to speed, how effective they are, what kind of a book load they can handle, uh, it makes a, a ton of difference, as you can imagine. And so now we have a staff uh, recruiting and staff development plan that goes out really to the, to the end of our strategic growth plan out 10 years. So we know what we're sourcing for next year, the year after, and the year after that. And, and so uh, we've turned it into a, a talent development engine uh, that knows what they're looking for knows the profile of, of the students, and we're out there actively looking to fill our needs really years in advance. So our primary source of talent, um, Bob, you can advance these slides, right? Yeah. Uh, our primary source of talent are college grads, and our, our, and our main hunting ground for these top uh, college students are the schools in our area that have insurance and risk management degree programs, um, mainly Indiana State and Terre Haute, Olivet College up in Olivet, Michigan, near Lansing, and Ball State uh, in Muncie, Indiana. And these are 
three very strong insurance and risk management programs. Um, we have about 33 millennials or, or people under the age of 30 working at Gibson, about 30% of our staff. That's way, uh, that's, that's wild, guys. I mean, I'm sorry to interrupt. I've never heard that either. That's a huge number of percentage of millennials. I mean, I'm proud yeah. of you, but boy, that's a shocker. <laughs> well, go ahead. Well, you can imagine, you can imagine uh, George, the energy it brings. These are very ambitious, very bright young people. They're totally committed to our, our growth strategy and what we're trying to do. They're totally invested in being employee owners and having a piece of the agency through our uh, our 401 k matching program that gives them Gibson stock um, as part of the matching program. But it kind of starts with, with getting out on campus, uh, meeting these students when they're freshmen and sophomore and juniors and seniors. So we go to the, all their events. They have they have interview they have interview workshops, resume workshops. They have employer fairs. They have golf outings where they're trying to raise money. Uh, you have the Gamma uh, uh, Sigma Iota fraternity, which is the insurance risk management fraternity that they're involved in. So we're plugged into all of that, and we're plugged in on social media. So these students are very much active on Twitter, they're active on Facebook, they're active on LinkedIn, and we interact with them that way. And and we, you know, we identify, in fact, I was up at Olivet uh, a week ago at an interviewing workshop where I got to meet about 100 kids that are in that program and have already got my eye on some freshmen, some sophomores, some juniors that look promising and strong. If we think they have sales aptitude, we give them the sales uh, assessment that we use, the sales builder test, to see what kind of personality they have. And we start to develop a relationship with them that may take two, three years before we bring them into Gibson as an intern. So we focus on uh, internships the, the summer after their junior year um, because, you know, we're very focused on what our openings are for the following spring. So we know how many operations people, we know how many sales trainees we want to hire a year in advance. So we, we bring people in to intern the summer after their junior year. Uh, if they like us and we like them, we send them back to school for their senior year with a job offer um, to come to work for us the following spring when they graduate. Oh gosh, this is this very is, strong model to get the kids excited about what we are trying to do as an agency. Better, very strong model for anybody to listen to. I mean, this is just this is where we all say we should be, but you're there. I can't believe this. this is, I'm, I'm excuse me for being gushy, but. It's really something, guys. I'm so glad I read that article of yours, Bob. That's another thing. Well, um, <clears throat> so you're going to those various schools. I, I see, uh, you know, I know all those schools back being with old Hoosier from a long time ago. And it sounds, mm -hmm. sounds exciting uh, every way, shape, or form, right? And, George, George there's a, a funny side note to this. Um, one of our um, interns that we, we hired, and he's uh, – He's on a career path to be a client manager. He's not not uh, profiled to be a salesperson producer, but he's a very strong technician. And uh, he came from uh, Olivet, and and he helps Jerry stay connected with Olivet and participates in golf outings and such. Um, he uh, bought a house uh, about six months ago, and um, before he had bought his house, he was actually rooming with one of. Uh, the 26-year-old producer that's on my team uh, before he got married. So he was rooming, you know, and paying, paying away, his way in rent. But when he bought his house last summer, we had three interns that needed uh, places to stay. That's, that's one of the biggest problems with interns. Yeah. They, don't get, they do get paid, but they don't get paid a lot. And, and where, can, where can they get housing? Because they're not from this area. They don't have relatives here. So... Um, so those three interns ended up uh, bunking in uh, our account manager's, uh, their client manager's mm -hmm. home uh, before he got married. And so uh, we ended up calling that the fraternity house. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, you guys are too bad. And, 
Too much, too much. And they all, you know, at the end of work day, they'd all hang out together and go do things, go out to lunch and dinner and such. And, and um, it, but, it, you know, we laugh about it, but it was important for those interns to have a good social experience as well as a good work one. Wow. And uh, all three of those interns uh, took job offers at Gibson when they graduated. They didn't have any choice. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I'll tell you guys, the, the, the coolest thing to me is, is, a, is a kind of a talent professional is, you know, last summer we had an intern, uh, a young lady from Olivet, Leah Loop, who, who I met when she was a freshman, got to know her over three years, brought her into intern, she is going to work on Bob's team next spring as as our, our really our first female middle market commercial producer. Perfect. And we think she is going to be an absolute superstar. <laughs> and it is so cool to me to know that she is going into that team environment where she is going to get trained and mentored and made successful. And that makes me want to go on campus and tell everybody that story as to why you should come to work for Gibson, because if you're a salesperson, we're going to put you in a team that will make you successful. That's fantastic. I like it. Let me see that next uh, the picture of the uh, of the uh, universities there. There's there. You guys are going. To, <clears throat> it's amazing that you've got uh, got your feet in or whatever to uh, what six, six universities. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's that's big time uh, stuff. Yeah, again, as uh, Jerry mentioned, Indiana State. That's where our president uh, Tim Lehman uh, went to school, and he's maintained connections there. So we have a number of Indiana State grads, and then Ball State and all of that. They're very strong in risk management insurance. Um, Butler has just recently started a risk management program, oh, man. and then uh, just because of our location in South Bend, uh, where we we definitely get exposed to some uh, students from Indiana. And Notre Dame. For um, sure. So, yeah. you know those. Uh, but once you uh, start connecting with those campuses, like Jerry has done, uh, you really establish credibility with the professors, uh, the leadership at that school. Uh, they ask our professionals to to be on advisory councils, and um, so there is a very strong relationship with the schools themselves, and this helps. Um, us to see and get uh, the very best of their students coming out of the school because that's that's what we're looking for. It seems we, to be we want finding we them. want the <laughs> most intelligent and and the ones that are highly motivated to uh, to to start their career. Well, guys, listen, I'll I, I'll wrap it up now for the time sake of time. But this is one of the better presentations I've ever heard an agency do. We seldom have agencies on here uh, because, uh, you know, nobody seems to be quite as far along here that I've heard. I mean, sure, there are some, but I just, I'll find them eventually. After they hear this, they may come out of the woodwork. I don't know. But Bob and Jerry, I, there's your uh, contact information, your phones, and uh, will you guys help poor agents, other poor agents to, to answer some questions for him. I hope you will. Absolutely. I'd welcome uh, phone calls from, from anyone that was curious about it. I, and as yeah. you mentioned, in the uh, the Indiana agent uh, November issue is uh, is an article on uh, the art of team selling. Um, uh, but uh, today's presentation, George, uh, we really got in to some nice depth, and, and we I certainly thank you for the opportunity oh. to, uh, <laughs> to, to go through uh, uh, what what we've experienced here at Gibson. Okay, guys. Yeah, well, listen. I agree with that too, guys. Totally. We have an abundance mentality. We love talking about this stuff. We love sharing it with anybody that's interested. I love it to hear from you. Okay. Well, listen. Thank you again. We'll pass this around. It'll go out to hundred and some odd thousand people. We hope they all read it. They won't, because, but uh, if they do, it would change the industry totally. We wouldn't have to worry about the Geico's of the world anymore. I can tell you that. Goodbye. Uh, <laughs> right. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. That kind of a of a sale. We don't commodity type sale. We don't have that anymore. So listen, thank you again to the rest of you. Don't forget to go back to uh, the basics back on the uh, agencies online. You can remember we have a lot, a lot of basics in there for these new people. I just talked to Bob and Jerry about uh, these new people coming in can use those basic recordings to learn what the basics are in each of these. So that's a good thing too. And for the rest of you, I'll see you again next Monday.